Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we're talking about the concepts related to testing. Uh, we are in chapter one talking about the basics of software testing and continuing ahead with 1.3 which is principles of testing. So far as a part of our earlier tutorials we covered a few of the principles. Uh, we covered five of them so far and now we're talking about the remaining two of them which are equally important to be followed by the testing team. The very next tutorial we're talking about is it takes testing is context dependent uh, and the word pretty much speaks about itself. Uh, testing is context dependent. Now what exactly context stands for? Context deals with subject matter, the domain, the type of industry, what you're talking about or were you the type of product what you're building up, right? And they are different. If the products are different, what you're trying to build up, then the strategy, the approach to test it will also be different. In a very simple terminology, what I would like to say here, a safety critical device or a system which is safety critical dealing is not tested how you test an e-commerce website right a medical electronics equipment and electronic appliances or maybe you're talking about any of the airborne system you talk about automotive you talk about mobile application or you talk about a very general uh, kind of a store billing system they're all different from each other in a unique manner and certainly the testing approach right writing the test cases could be same but the approach to test it like what you should begin with what kind of area you should be targeting what kind of techniques you should be applying and what part needs to be tested to the extent what criticality needs to be covered and many more such things need to be addressed as a part of your approach right so when it comes to testing different products their approach their strategy will also be different so do not tend to say that I have been testing a banking application for five years now and that means that I can test an uh, automotive system too? Answer is no, because the automotive standards are different than the banking standards and they do not match either. So we, we just need to make sure that we have some understanding about the automotive domain first, how exactly the system works, what kind of environments you use, because they're all different when it comes to two different platforms or two different products. So testing is context dependent. Two different products are not tested in the same manner. Stepping into the next principle or the last principle of our discussion as a part of this where we are talking about the absence of error is a fallacy. Now absence of error is a fallacy basically stands for absence of error is also a failure. Now, of course, we do understand that testing is all about finding defects and removing them during our ordinary software development lifecycle process. But at this point, one of the principal is trying to contradict with our understanding, saying that absence of error, which means that finding and removing defects from the product could also be a failure. How is that even possible, right? Because there are expectations from the business. You're not building a product of your own. You're not building a product which you think it should work according to you. You have been provided with certain expectations from the business, from the client, and you are trying to build those expectations. Because a product can behave differently based on the expectation of your business. right? Now the business team has given you an expectation that the name field should accept characters alone, but at the same time it should be up to 10 characters strictly. Now, the same name field on a different application could be expected to have at least 15 characters or at most 15 characters, right? Now, we understand pretty much that the validation rules, the expectations from a feature, from a functionality, from the overall product is well-defined as a part of your requirement. So, what we want to convey you from this principle is that, that just finding and fixing defect does not help if the built product is useless to the customer. That means all your testing effort, all your testing activities, all your test case executions must also be making sure that the product is being built as per the expectation defined by the customer. Not just simply testing, finding bugs and fixing them, right? Because it could be at any point can be declared as a piece of nothing, like, you know, just a waste of, you know, all your effort and the piece is good for nothing. 
So make sure that when you're testing, you're not testing it independently from your own thought process. You're making sure that the customer has set you some requirements, certain expectations, and you are making sure that it is meeting their expectations at the same time. Because writing a program to add two numbers and if it is working fine, doesn't make sense if the request of the customer was to create a program to multiply two numbers. If you didn't understand this, play it back for a moment and listen to it again. So that was all we had from the principles of testing and we're just closing up here now. We will be stepping into the test process in our next tutorials and I want to see you, see you all there to continue learning about the same. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.